In this video, we'll be using the fundamental theorem of line integrals to compute work done by gravity. The question says, a rocket orbits about the planet Kerbin with a radius of 600 kilometers, with a periapsis of 100 kilometers and an apoapsis of 11,400 kilometers above the surface. In the two-dimensional orbital plane, the force of gravity on the rocket is given by F equal minus G big M little m divided by R squared times this vector r over the magnitude of r, where r, the vector r, is a position vector given in terms of x and y components. It's the position vector for the rocket. g is a universal gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Big M is 5.29 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. It's the mass of the planet Kerbin. And little m, that's 3,000 kilograms. That's the mass of the rocket. So the question says, use the fundamental theorem of line integrals to compute the work done by gravity as the rocket orbits from periapsis to apoapsis. Well, it's nice to start here with a picture. So I've graphed the planet Kerbin with a radius 600, 600 kilometers. That's what this line does. I'm using Desmos here. So r equals 600 is a circle with radius 600. That's this red circle. This is actually the path of the orbit from periapsis, well, the entire path given in a polar form. And actually, in this particular example, we don't really need actually to have this formula. I just thought I'd put it on there because I've been working on this with my other series of videos that are on the uh, orbital mechanics of, uh, of this particular uh, path. So I just w thought I'd use it. But it, we don't really need this um, polar form because we are operating here in a conservative vector field. And so we have a potential function that we can use to compute the work done. But I thought it'd still illustrate the use of a line integral to do that. All right, so what's happening is this is a series of things that I'm going through for, a, for Calc 2, but I want to do this sort of Calc 3 calculation here uh, using some, some work that I already did for the Calc 2 class. So let's apply, apply the fundamental theorem of line integrals to compute the work done by gravity. Okay, so let's get to work. Work in physics in a vector field along a path like this. Let's call this the path C. It's a line integral over the path C of some force dot with the differential in the position. This is really force times distance, but it's where the force is changing over that distance along a path C. Let's make the path C the orbit from the periapsis to the apoapsis. So it's just half of the orbit. Well, the reason I say we don't really need this polar form and we're not going to need to parameterize this curve because it's a conservative vector field, which means there is a potential function, little f, whose gradient is the vector field. There's a potential function whose gradient gives, us, gives rise to the um, gravitational vector field. That potential function is this. Gravitational constant, mass of the primary, mass of the rocket, divided by basically the distance. This is almost the potential energy function. It's actually... Um, the gravitational potential function, which the negative of this is the potential energy. Now, I won't do it here to save the length of the video, but if you did a gradient of this function, written as it is here without the negative is in math the gravitational potential function that we would use that its gradient, which is a vector, partial of f with respect to x in the x component, the partial of f with respect to y in the y component, that is the vector field that is the gravitational field. And so when it comes to the question of computing work, work done by a vector field f along some path c, in this case we know there exists this potential function so we could write it's the gradient of the potential function dotted with the position along that path C. But then this is it. This is the fundamental theorem of line integrals that, in fact, 
what you could do is just evaluate the potential function at the endpoints of the path C. So we would say f at the position at, let's say, the position was given in terms of some parameterization in t at where t is the time, we'll say at time 2 minus the potential function at the position at time 1. Or I could have written that as, so with all that being said, we just need to look at what are those initial and terminal points along the path. This point being at an altitude of 100 kilometers above the uh, surface, this is the point 700 comma 0, and this is the point negative 12,000 comma 0 at apoapsis. So I just plug those two points in to my potential function to get the work done by gravity. And that's why we didn't really need the equation of the orbit. We don't really actually need the graph of the orbit either. We don't even really care what the actual path is because the path is through a conservative vector field and therefore that's all we need to know is what is the potential function and having the potential function and the fundamental theorem of line integrals just allows us to evaluate the potential function at the two endpoints of the curve. And so it's completely independent of the path. We could have just as well traveled from the periapsis directly to the apoapsis along a straight line path and the work done by gravity along that path would be exactly the same as the work done by gravity along the elliptical path. It's pretty amazing, but that's the fundamental theorem of line integrals uh, as applied to a function that is a conservative, that uh, is applied to um, a path in a conservative vector field. That because there's a potential function, we can just evaluate at the endpoints. So that's what I was doing, getting ready to plug in. So the potential function is this g m little m, let's say, divided by the square root x squared plus y squared. That's the potential function. And let's say at the point well, here's how we have to be a little bit careful in actually using the units correctly here. Um, we have to plug in these two points. Let's call point one the 700 kilometer uh, periapsis and point two the 12,000 kilometer apoapsis. I had a negative in the graph just because the way that I graphed it. Since I graphed it with the um, center of the planet at zero and I had a periapsis on one side and the apoapsis on the other side, that's where the negative came in. It isn't really going to matter whether you used a plus or a minus in this particular calculation because it's really about the distance. You see, when I plug in these two points, you're really just computing the distance. You've got the square root of these squares and so you're getting only ma what matters would be the distance. Uh, but I need to get that distance in the correct units uh, to get the right final answer. So, of course, this g m little m, this is a factor in both terms. Let's factor that out. We'll write in those values later. So if you're plugging this in, you're just getting the distance. So that's 12,000 kilometers. So it's 1 over 12,000 kilometers or let's say 12,000 thousand, that is in meters. And then when I plug in 700, the distance is 700 kilometers, but in meters, it's 700,000 meters. Now I've plugged in those values. This is the g. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 is the gravitational constant. This is the mass of the primary body that we're orbiting, the mass of carbon. This is the mass of the rocket. And here are my reciprocals of the distances, 1 over 12 million minus 1 over 700,000, and I get negative 1.42 times 10 to the 10 joules, or Newton meters. Now, I realize that there's, there is a way that I can actually check this answer using some of the work that I did in the Calc 2 video, and so I have that here. I'm going to jump over to that in that other video, I actually calculated what the speed would be at the uh, periapsis, and I know what the speed is at the apoapsis. 
It's 180 meters per second. And so I could actually look at the change in kinetic energy, and that should be the same as the change in the potential energy in this elliptical orbit. The change in kinetic energy would be the uh, ending kinetic energy, subtract the starting kinetic energy. So of course, 1 half times the mass of the object factors out. We're going to look at just the difference of the squares of the velocities with a 3,000 mass, uh, 3,000 kilogram mass rocket. And because I calculated in the other video, the uh, velocity at the apoapsis was 180 meters per second. And the velocity at the um, velocity at the at the periapsis that was 3,087 3,087 meters per second. Let's put that in a calculator and see if we get the same thing. Yeah, that's negative 1.4. If you round off, it's still negative 1.42 times 10 to the 10, uh, and that is that's joules or newton meters, and you know, I think that it's not exactly 180, it was not exactly 3087, so I don't expect the exact same value for, uh, you know, every decimal place, uh, because there's rounding involved in all of these calculations. In fact, I have, you know, rounded off the mass of the prime primary body, and I've rounded off here in the gravitational constant, so... Um, yeah, but I think that's that's pretty convincing that I'm getting the same answer there. So that that's that satisfies me that I, I have the right answer. It matches to the change in the kinetic energy here between these two or uh, two points in the orbit. Perhaps some uh, comment should be made about the sign. The fact that it's negative, the work done by gravity should be negative here, because in this path, as we leave the periapsis and travel from this point to the apoapsis, we're traveling against the force of gravity. So gravity is doing negative work along that path. Any path, if you go from this point to this point, uh, gravity is kind of losing in a way because uh, you're going against gravity there. And so gravity uh, does negative work uh, on any path that goes from the periapsis to the apoapsis. And so gravity does negative work. Uh, that's a negative value in the answer. And this is a negative because we're actually decreasing the kinetic energy. Uh, initially, we are traveling at 3,087 meters per second at the periapsis, where we're much faster than out there at the apoapsis, 180 meters per second. We are losing kinetic energy. And so that's also a, a, a drop in kinetic energy. That's why that's a negative. Okay, I think I can tie everything together and end it on this point. We're looking at the conservation of energy really here, that the total energy of the rocket remains the same uh, throughout its orbit. So we could say kinetic energy at point one plus the potential energy at point one would equal kinetic energy at point two plus potential energy at point two. So kinetic energy at point one based on velocity one and potential energy at point one with some distance d1 from the focus of the orbit the potential energy, remember, has this negative. The actual potential energy has a negative in this uh, expression. So this is potent, uh, kinetic and potential energy at point one. This is kinetic and potential energy at some other point two, like at the apoapsis, with velocity two and distance two at that other point. Here, I've rearranged the terms. So to put the distance two first, uh, move this term over to the left-hand side. So if I factor that negative out, I have the change in the potential energy. What I have written here is actually the negative of the change in the potential energy. This is the actual work done by gravity. This is the change in the kinetic energy between those two points in the orbit. This is just in an orbit, so there's no change in the mass of the rocket. It stays the same. It's just orbiting throughout uh, its uh, entire path there with the same mass. So in this video, this is the calculation that we did. It was the work done by gravity. It was that negative 1.42 times 10 to the 10 joules or newton meters that came from those uh, values for the gravitational constant, the mass of the primary, the mass of the rocket. This is 1 over the distance. Distance 2, the distance at the apoapsis, 12 million meters. This is the 
uh, 1 over the distance 1, 700,000 meters. This is a negative because 1 over 12 million is smaller than 1 over 700,000. And we could check that by because in this separate video I had computed what the velocities were at the apoapsis and at the periapsis at the apoapsis. Uh, velocity at point 0.2, it's much slower, 180 meters per second. At the periapsis, it would have been 3,087, because I have already separately checked that and computed that in a different way. I know what those speeds are, and I know what that change in kinetic energy is, and I know that that would be a negative as well, because it's it's reducing its speed, it's losing kinetic, ki losing kinetic energy, so there's a negative change in kinetic energy. So the work done by gravity, opposite of the change in the potential energy, that was a negative, these two values are equal, that confirms that the calculation that I had done in this video is correct. Okay, let's stop there. That should be the end. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this was interesting and helpful.